So, as I say, you're going to hear some of this again. But by the time I got to Bruise and Bites to pick up our cake for today, our oh-so-beautiful cake in the back, um, I had half the sermon written. I had said the word home to myself, and I began to think, wow, if we're a home, the chairs should be comfy and there should be a place to put up our feet occasionally. <laughs> and then I think, okay, home, and I... And there are a whole bunch of us living here. So I immediately thought, huh, what are the rules here? Where is the chore chart? <laughs> Just like you have at your family home. Change the toilet paper and put it on the right way. Don't leave dirty dishes in the sink. Clean up after yourselves. Take responsibilities for things that no one asks you to do. Do you have a job that makes this place better? Do you straighten the crooked, pa crooked paintings or wash the countertops? What tiny caress do you give your home, this place, every week? If you see something that isn't being done, why, that's probably your job. <laughs> These little things will transform our house of worship into spiritual home. And as we treat it like our home, investing our time as well as our money, we start feeling more comfortable here. There are many of us who call this home, and many more who may want to join us, so the place needs to be welcoming. Space can work its own magic. When it is welcoming and well-loved, we feel that we are welcome to come in. There's room to begin to feel comfortable both to be who we are here and to grow into whom we wish to become. Because this is not just any home. This is a home for religious community. And what does that mean? This will, is and will be the center for our spiritual lives and community as well as the springboard for our spiritual searching and spiritual activism. We think of it often as a place for our kids to learn, but we should also come here to learn from one another, from our tradition, and from what's going on around us. People ask us if UUism is really a religion. Really? <laughs> really? Well, my computer tells me. Religion is any cultural system of designated behaviors and practices, world texts, worldviews, texts, sanctified places, ethics, or organizations that relate humanity to the supernatural or transcendental. We certainly have history of the transcendental. Religions relate humanity to what anthropologist Clifford Geertz has referred to as a cosmic order of existence. However, there is no scholarly consensus over what exactly constitutes a religion. What a relief. There's room for us. <laughs> We are a confusing tradition as much for ourselves as for outsiders. We affirm principles of behavior. Those are, think of them as slightly larger house rules. And we each work to discern what we believe about the order of existence. It's why the building your own theology class is so important. In my experience, every time I stumble across new justice issues, justice issues that help me understand my firmly held but invisible to me prejudices, my understanding of the order of existence changes. It gets bigger. My world gets bigger along with my understanding. Some call it evolution and others call it God. All of us should call it hard but good work. All of us should understand what a privilege it is to do this work. I think one of the largest pieces of our individual and communal faith journey is discovering how everyone else's order of existence also leaves, leads them to affirming our seven principles. We must cherish our diversity and increase it. We must remember how important it is that we live with principles we affirm rather than with commands not to do things. There's a difference in saying yes. Our principles that w mean that we work toward building life and deepening its meanings. The very tenets of our tradition call us to confront our limitations. 
They call us to redefine our understanding of the world and all who live upon it. This is an ongoing and very uncomfortable process. Every new thing we learn about justice reveals our limitations and keeps our nose to the spiritual grindstone. Just when you think you have it and you're standing strong, there's another little humbling block. We have come together to make this place a house of peace and ourselves people of joy. I want to point out that I got us a pineapple for the altar in deference for those who don't remember, but to a typo that I once had where I was trying to write that we all should become peoples of peace and instead it thought we should all become pineapples of peace. So here we are, pineapples. May it be so. You remember, we're prickly and spiny, but oh, so sweet on the inside. What? Pineapples mean welcome, right? So if you had seen the work party yesterday, you would have been so proud and happy. People clipped and pruned and mulched. That juniper out there doesn't know what happened to it. <laughs> that juniper provides a great model for who we must be in this valley, strong, resilient, and completely intransigent. <laughs> no. Just like a juniper that's planted in our garden, we shall not be moved. <laughs> Everyone had such a good time working at making this place ours. We gain from the process and import meaning, impart meaning to this building as we put our hands to work. There were even trucks and chains and triumphant squeals as roots were removed. Can you imagine? You use with trucks and chains. <laughs> we are invincible. Inside, small children were pushing chairs with Sarah and building river altars with Anne. If you see Callie and Elva, be sure to tell them what a great job they did. We're already using this space differently. I came in Wednesday evening and there were people doing Zen meditation in our meditation room. Barb Schaefer told me that the book group crammed themselves into the library. No more people reading books or you're going to have to have two because, or we're all going to have to go on a diet. Nah. Nah. That's not going to happen. Um, Sunday evening, Lenore and I walked the labyrinth and because we could and it was out all week, I walked it two other times, and the space looks spare and beautiful with it here. There is room to exhale here. This is pure spiritual luxury. This afternoon, as you're showing guests around, take a good look at the tiny miracles that have already happened here. The walls look different with Jean Weston's quilts on them. And for those who didn't know Jean, she was the queen of hospitality and she was the queen of quilts. And um, what she always say that feeding people is my ministry. And she did. And she kept us all warm. The sanctuary is enhanced by Dick Bonham's sculpture. It's so exciting to have that here at Dick. Thank you. The library is a comfortable place to sit, and it has interesting books in it, should you ever want to wander in there. The landscape is slowly being tamed. We can stop worrying about being eaten by that hedge when we come to services. The chairs are out of the hall back there, thanks again to the littles. Um, there are people who are working on what may happen in the future, but there are also very many working on who we are right now. There's a lot to enjoy. Just because we're looking forward doesn't mean we shouldn't revel in what we have now. Always stop and be astounded by miracles. They're everywhere if we only look. Sure, there's a lot to be done. Some of it is in motion and other stuff is just going to have to wait. But in the meantime, we have more room than we've ever had, all under one roof. We did this together. And we're already seeing things beginning to happen. More people are here, and they're bringing their kids. Groups are meeting here, using our space. We're going to be here a long time. And this space is going to reflect who we are, what we do, and what we believe. Just like that juniper that's planted in our garden, we 
shall not be moved, especially anytime soon, because we just did all of this. <laughs> and it's a good thing we are here. And then I tell the story about having breakfast while picking up the cake. The thing that was so hard for me was how frightened Sonia was, and right to be frightened. And there's really, I wasn't there, you know. It's not like we follow our Muslim friends or our Jewish friends around, you know, to go to places to be with them. Um, they did all the right things. Eventually this will go to the FBI because it's a hate crime. It's amazing that when I call Nina, Nina will come. It's amazing that the rest of us will respond. But my friends, our friends, were threatened next door to our home. I felt impotent. What if something physical had happened? I was a town away. What if that man had had a gun, and he may well have, instead of just making sounds? If, what if Sobi had followed his first inclination to talk kindly to him? Who knows what that man's fear might have led him to do? Sonia's hijabi, and thus she's a target. We can't forget. Our friends are being threatened. They are threatened for being Jews. They are threatened for being Muslims. They are threatened for being black. They are threatened for being Hispanic. Well, let, the, let those people who are threatening be threatened by us because we are people of peace and their way of life needs to come to an end. This is our valley. We live here. We worship here. We practice and witness to our faith here. We live our lives on the side of love and we will figure out what that means going forward. We are not impotent, however much we feel that way. And we will not let ignorance defeat us. Again, like the juniper planted in the garden, we will not be moved. I don't know what we do. I know I don't want to be this frightened for my friends, which is nothing, I'm sure, to the fear that they feel. Living in fear is a lousy way to live. And so we must find a way not to do that, or rather to live in the face of that fear and to live in love. Now more than ever, I commit to figuring out how to bring a former white supremacist to this valley. We need to figure out how to be more public, how to spend time doing good, hanging fun, just hanging out with those under threat. We need to be in this spot and, fill out and spill out onto the, onto the pavement. We need to be downtown. We've said this before, and then we all get busy, and we don't go to Dunkin' Donuts with our friends who wear hijab. Um, but we need to do that. Let people understand that all of these people, all of us, are part of our valley, and we are part of a much larger community. They are not alone. We are not alone. And don't kid yourself just because we pass. We are still seen as threatening. I still get, I can't tell you how many times people say to me, I can't believe you do this much good when you believe nothing. <laughs> it's a wonderful opportunity for me to practice holding my peace. <laughs> P-I-E-C-E, -E, peace. <laughs> In the face of that hate, we must keep speaking out. We need people to know what we stand for. Our beautiful ma manicured gardens must celebrate and surround a house of peace. People must know that we are good citizens of this valley and of this country, how many times have we been told we're not American? And that we are committed to raising the bar. Let us do it by voting, for one thing. <coughs> but because I'm me, I'm going to make us sing. <laughs> 
We're standing here for justice. We shall not be moved. We're standing here for justice. We shall not be moved. Just like a juniper that's planted in our garden. We shall not be moved. We're all in this together and we shall not be moved. We're all in this together. We shall not be moved just like a juniper that's planted in our garden. We shall not be moved. We're pineapples for peace and we shall not be moved. Well, we're pineapples for peace and we shall not be moved just like a juniper that's planted in our garden. We shall not be moved. Blessed be.